Hello everyone, my name is Judita and I'm pleased to welcome you all to the webinar Fundamentals of Model-Based Systems Engineering. The topic addresses fundamental concepts of model-based systems engineering and practice. It covers language, method and modeling tool of MBSE, mainly focusing on the last one. The session is hosted by Aista Aleksandravicine, Solution Architect at Nomadic Europe. Aista has been with Nomadic since 2010. Currently, she is a Solution Architect and takes responsibility for organizing webinars, producing and maintaining training material, as well as educating Nomadic clients. Her expertise area is model-based systems engineering with special focus on managing system requirements. Also, Aista actively collaborates with her colleagues in writing papers to promote the MBSC culture in systems engineering. Today's presentation will take about 50 minutes and the question answer section about 10. You can ask questions during the entire session. Just simply type your questions in the questions area and Aista will answer them later on. Due to the limited time, some questions might be left unanswered. In such case, answers will be published in writing form together with a link to the webinar recording. So, I stand. Are you ready to start now? Thank you, Edita, once again for the introduction. Uh, it's nice to see so many people joined here. Um, so, there is nothing left to wait for. And let me start the presentation. Uh, actually, I'm going to start from the agenda. I'm going to say what are you going to learn during this webinar. And actually, the webinar consists of three parts. Uh, the presentation, uh, in which I shortly introduce you to MBSC, say the advantages of MBSC um, over the document-based systems engineering, and also say what you need to know to get started with model-based systems engineering. Then I'm going to switch to the demo and introduce you to the main parts of the modeling tool window. Then I'm going to show you how to create a new project, what's the difference between the project and the model. Uh, then I will create, I will demonstrate the creation of a new diagram and element. Uh, explain the differences between the element and symbol, between the containment and composition, between the definition and usage. Also, I will show how to create relationships and then uh, give some tips on navigation in the model. As Judith has already mentioned, uh, uh, the last 10 minutes of our webinar will be devoted for questions and answers. So now let's proceed. Uh, so what is MBSC? Uh, simply speaking, uh, this is, it is systems engineering using models. But um, I guess you would like to hear the more comprehensive uh, description. And uh, actually I have one that I would like to share with you. It is proposed by International Council of Systems Engineering, INCOS, and it says that model-based systems engineering is a formalized application of modeling to support system requirements, analysis, design, verification, and validation activities, beginning in the conceptual design phase and continuing through how development and later life cycle phases. This uh, description was uh, uh, proposed by INCOS in the Z7 brochure, which is available in the internet. And here is the address of the brochure. So with this, the, with the next slide, I would like to uh, you to, to, to say that the model-driven approach of systems engineering is our future and the document-centric one, the document-centric approach is that traditional one. It, it, it has been a traditional uh, one for a while, but now it is a past and um, 
I'm sure that those who ever used the document-centric approach uh, don't object to that. It doesn't, it just doesn't work because it's very difficult. It is difficult to assess completeness and consistent, consistency of information spread across several documents. And um, it is difficult to perform traceability. For example, if you have a requirement and would like to find out uh, what, uh, what uh, design elements, for example, interface, what, what design elements covers that requirement, it is difficult to find out in the documents. It is also difficult to assess change impacts. And uh, the model-based uh, approach uh, conquers all these difficulties and issues. So it is really our future, and um, it is uh, it is likely that in the future the all the systems will be model based, and the model based will no longer be a distinctive feature of uh, the system model. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the concepts about the things you need to know to get started with modeling. Uh, modeling solution is a combination of a modeling language, a methodology, and a modeling tool that together provide a productive infrastructure for applying model-driven development in the context of a particular organization. You see here three keywords that are, that are highlighted. These are those three things that you need to know to get started. And now I'm going to um, overview each of them very briefly. Um, it is no doubt that modeling language is SysML. It is uh, widely known. OMG created and uh, maintained standard for specification, analysis, design, and verification and validation of complex systems. It includes nine diagrams and um, is supported in various in various modeling tools. Uh, here is uh, the 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 picture the concept of uh, of SysML pillars. Uh, I want to say that uh, all nine SysML diagrams are can are typically classified into structural, behavioral requirements, and parametrics. But that's not enough to get started with modeling because this is just a language and it doesn't provide the guidelines on how to, how, with what elements, with what views to start, how to proceed, and uh, how to know that your model is already complete. So we need a methodology, a methodology that tells us uh, how to structure the model, what views to build, what artifacts to deliver, and especially it uh, uh, provides the, the rules, the directions for the sequence, for the workflow. And every organization chooses the methodology according to its own needs. And some of them chooses frameworks such as UAF, DODAF, MODAF, NAV. Some of them chooses the lighter ways, uh, that, that is methodologies. But as our practice tells, um, that in most common cases, um, methodology is always used with some architecture framework. Um, And the last, but not the less important thing, without which you won't be able to create and store your model, is a modeling tool. And here I want to introduce the Cameo Systems Modeler, which provides the environment for system architects, system analysts, developers, quality engineers, and other people that are engaged in the systems modeling. It is a very popular tool because it is most standard compliant and um, 
it it is it can be easily customized according to to customer needs and um, what i want to know to you to explain here is that camera systems modeler is a bundle of products where magic draw stands for the modeling platform and uh, uh, there is also a bundle of uh, plugins of which the most important is uh, SysML plugin and also Cameo simulation toolkit. So if we have two users uh, where of which one works with Cameo systems modeler and the other has magic draw plus SysML plugin and Cameo simulation toolkit uh, this means that both these both users uh, have the same modeling environment. And here is uh, the last slide before starting our demonstration. Here with the slide, I want to introduce you with the main parts of the uh, Cameo Systems Modeler window. Um, here is the main menu. At the top, uh, under the main menu, we have the main toolbar, which uh, includes the main shortcuts of the main of the most popular commands from the main menu. We also have model browser, uh, which provides uh, different views of a model, like containment, structure, diagrams. We will talk about it later and during the demo. And here is diagram pane. Right under the diagram pane, we have diagram toolbar, uh, which allows us to, to arrange, to adjust, to customize the, the appearance of a diagram pane. And uh, the last thing, thing is diagram palette. Uh, which is uh, used for creating elements directly in the diagram. Um, now let's open our modeling tool, Cameo Systems Modeler. Actually, it is already opened uh, in my computer, just to save several minutes. And I use the 18.3 version. And now I'm going to create a new project. Uh, there are many ways to create the project and I will use one of them. Uh, as I'm going to create the system to model a hybrid utility vehicle, uh, I will make, I will give the short name HUV for my project. As you see, uh, the SysML project template is selected by default. I'm going to use it. I don't need to change anything. Click OK and let's wait a few seconds for the blank project to load. So, uh, we already have a blank project and uh, just before starting to create our sample model, I would like you to understand the difference between the project and the model. Um, because many users uh, are mixing those two concepts. So the best, the, 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 the main difference between them is that the model 
is a part of a project. Project uh, is a physical concept. Uh, it is a working unit that consists of a model and project configuration options. And model is a logical concept. It is uh, an abstraction of a system uh, which describes the system in various aspects, so-called viewpoints. And the model uh, consists of model elements uh, such as um, requirements, use cases, actors, blocks, and so on, and also of one or more diagrams that shows specific viewpoints of that system. So, we have already created the project. Now, uh, let's start with uh, uh, modeling. Uh, first of all, um, let's establish a structure of a model. Uh, the coherent structure of a model uh, can be achieved with um, by utilizing packages. Uh, there is a special element of SysML packages that uh, that can that can be used for for creating model hierarchy. Uh, packages can contain elements, other model elements, or other packages. So, um, and to, if you want to better understand what how the packages work in the model, just uh, remember Windows operating system and the folders are the same as packages, very similar to packages. So, um, for to, uh, to create packages, we will use the diagram. Uh, there is a special diagram for representing the structure of a model, and it is called the SysML package diagram. Now, I will create a diagram. I use search and then I see that a proper diagram is selected in the dialog. I press enter. As you see, I don't even need to use the mouse to create the diagram. Uh, the diagram by default is uh, named after the owning package. In this case, this is a root package model. I'm going to modify the diagram name just to make it uh, more comprehensive model structure. Let me zoom. And now uh, I will use a diagram palette to create packages. Let's say our, our model uh, consists of two packages. Um, behavior and uh, structure. Structure. Um, now, if we want to display the structure of the entire model on the diagram, we need to represent in the diagram the root package model as well. For this, I'm going to drag the root package to the diagram pane. And then, uh, to show the relations between the packages, I make a selection, right click, and um, choose the uh, related elements to sleep us. Here. Uh, as you see, the containment relationship is created between, no, not created, uh, displayed, displayed between the packages model behavior and model structure. Uh, meaning that these packages 
these two behavior and structure packages are contained in the model package. So now uh, I would like to explain you uh, the difference between the element and the symbol. Uh, here in the model browser, we there are elements. And uh, on the diagram, when we display those elements on the diagram, uh, this, uh, this ele uh, on the diagram, uh, we have the symbols of these elements. And uh, uh, ele and the symbol is the representation, uh, shortly speaking, of the element on the diagram. And element can have as many symbols as you need. But uh, the symbol can belong only to the one element of a model. So um, what is also important to know that uh, element symbols uh, do not depend from each other. So uh, to show this, uh, I'm going to uh, drag the element to the diagram uh, to show two symbols of the same element. And let's say I will change some symbol properties, for example, the fill color. And as you see, uh, the symbol is modified but uh, the same, the, the other symbol of the same element hasn't changed. Um, the dependency between the element and the symbol uh, is also, can also be proved by the following actions. Uh, let's say I will delete the element behavior. And uh, yeah. uh, as you see, the element is deleted together with its symbols because these symbols uh, belong to this element. No element, no symbols. Let's undo the action. And now I'm going to delete only symbol. Here. Yeah. The symbol is deleted, the other symbol of the same element is left, and the element itself is also left. Okay, uh, now we can uh, go to the next topic of our demonstration, uh, that is uh, the dif explaining the difference between the element containment and composition. And for this, I'm going to create a simple structure diagram, structure of a, a hybrid utility vehicle system. Uh, for this, I need to use the SysML block definition diagram. And now I will, I will create one of them. I will name it HUV structure and we'll create several blocks in this diagram. Uh, I want this block to represent the entire system, that is hybrid utility vehicle, HUV. And let's say that our system has two subsystems, uh, the brake subsystem and the power subsystem. For this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the composition relationship and create a, both subsystems. Now let's look at the model browser. 
uh, here under the structure package, we see that there are three new blocks created the brake subsystem, HUV, and power subsystem. And um, after we expand the, the HUV system block, we can see that it is composed of two parts, of two parts with type block. One part for brake subsystem, the other part for power subsystem. And uh, uh, the, those parts are created uh, by the composition relationship between two pairs of blocks, between HUV and brake system and between HUV and power subsystem. Uh, now let's see what happens when um, the deeper structure of a system is created. And for this, I'm going to specify that uh, the brake subsystem consists of two, of two blocks. Um, brake pedal brake pedal and brake disc and let's look at the model browser again um, here we can see that three two more blocks appeared and uh, we see that the brake subsystem has two parts it is composed of two of two blocks but um, the there is a problem that in the containment tree we cannot see uh, the deeper structure it is only one one layer composition displayed in the model browser and here is mm, here yeah, the structure tree helps us very much because it can show the deeper structure let's open it and expand huv as we see two subsystems and the brake subsystem is composed of brake pedal and Break this. And uh, now I would like to show you that uh, the same the same block uh, can be used. Uh, the same block defined once in the model can be used as a part in some system uh, several in several several uh, ways. For this, uh, I will specify that my brake system uh, consists of uh, right brake disc and the left brake disc. Right. left brake disc. So, as you can see in the structure tree, um, we have two part, parts of a brake subsystem with the same type brake disc, brake disc. So, um, we have learned already what is the difference between the containment and composition? And uh, we found out that the same block can be used uh, several times in the same system and uh, even in different subsystems. Now uh, I would like to demonstrate how to how to create uh, relationships. Actually, relationships that are that uh, connect elements in the same in the same uh, level of abstraction in the same view uh, I have already demonstrated that but now I would like to to explain to show how to 
how to create relationships between the elements from different levels of abstraction. And for this, uh, I'm going to create the dependence ma matrix between requirements and blocks. Uh, for this, uh, I need to do some, uh, some work. <laughs> Um, I will show you one more important feature, the copy-paste feature. Um, but first of all, let me create the requirements package in the model. Requirements package, and uh, in this package I will create the requirements table for pasting the requirements from external resource, that is um, Excel spreadsheet. Let's leave the same name as is, requirements. Um, here uh, is the Excel spreadsheet with uh, my requirements. And uh, as I see that there is no ID, of requirements in this spreadsheet, I'm gonna hide it in the table as well. Uh, now, I will copy the requirements from the Excel spreadsheet and will try to paste them in the camera systems modeler table. Um, let's say that these are simple requirements. And as you see, requirements are already pasted to the table. The summary at the bottom right corner shows the shows what is done, how many requirements copied, how many of them failed, failed nothing. <laughs> so the copy was successful. And um, in the model browser, we see that there are four requirement elements created in the model. Uh, now let's create the dependency matrix. Actually, there is one already predefined uh, requirement matrix, satisfy. I will use it now. And here, uh, let's name it requirements. Um, blocks. And as you can see in the criteria area, uh, there is already set uh, specified dependency criteria and uh, requirements as column element type. So we only need to specify the row element type. This will be block. So it is very easy to specify the type. Uh, on Take the element from the model browser with the type you need and drag it to the criteria area. Here, we have block and um, the scope definition is left. So requirements here and the structure here. Now let me just the the matrix. And here we can see that um, all the requirements and the blocks of the system we have already created. And let's say we want to say that uh, the breaking requirement is satisfied by the break disk block. For this, to create the satisfied relationship, I just need to double click that cell. Also, you can say that break pedal satisfies the breaking re uh, requirement. Yeah. And maybe the um, HUV. Uh, when you uh, let the mouse rest on the, on the cell, you can see the details of the relationship if you want to. Here it is said that the arrow represents the satisfy from the break disk to breaking requirement. 
uh, just if you change your mind that you think that for example this relationship between the HUV and breaking is um, not correct maybe HUV is too general block for satisfying that requirement you can simply remove it double click the cell again and the relationship is removed so that's all about creating relationships and I see we have um, one more topic left the navigation so for this we we can uh, switch back to the model structure diagram and I will show you how you can use hyperlinks to elements to diagrams to enhance the navigation in your model so um, for let's say we want to make uh, that double clicking the structure package opens the HUV structure diagram for this uh, we can um, simply drag the HUV structure diagram on the structure package symbol sign hyperlink and uh, see what's happen what happens when I double click the structure package here here we go and uh, now if we want to switch back to the main diagram we can add the model structure diagram symbol to the to this diagram pane which will work as a button of back navigation let's do this yeah Double click, we are back. Then double click our structure, we are back to the HV structure again. Uh, there is one uh, tip I would like to share with you so um, that if you want to visually uh, separate the, that um, diagram symbol you use for navigation from other, from the main elements of a diagram, uh, you can use the rectangular shape for example yeah and now we have um, separated um, what else uh, you can also add hyperlinks to um, from elements to um, websites to some external documents that are stored in your file system um, now I'm going to show you one document standards and let's say we want to add the link to the PDF document stored in my computer that, um, that uh, defines the standards for breaking security. So. I will drag it on the break subsystem block. Yeah. Yeah, now we have it and um, let's try to open it from open the uh, hyperlinked PDF from the model. Here it is. And there is one more feature I would like to to show you and to welcome you to use it. <laughs> um, it is very useful when we want to to display in one on one diagram pane several different aspects of a model. Uh, for example, here in the structural type diagram uh, we would we would like to see the behavior the state machine or diagram of a break subsystem so now I will show you how to do this and for this um, uh, I will create uh, one state machine diagram very simple just for for example
here it is. Um, let's say we have only two states on and um, off. And let me create the, the back transition. Okay. Um, just gonna make the diagram more more compact. And uh, now uh, let's get back to the HUV structure. Um, here uh, I will drag break subsystem to create the diagram symbol, just like the model structure diagram symbol. And then um, I will use that I symbol on the smart manipulator of this diagram symbol to show the content here. The content is, um, is dynamic and uh, this means that after you after you update the diagram, its representation here in this diagram updates as well. Uh, let me prove my claim. Um, for example, I will change the, the color of the shape and uh, also add one more state. Here. Uh, let me say that it is an anti blocking system. I will say that the breaking can also work without ABS. And now let's get back to the HUV structure diagram. As you see, the overview shape content is updated. So this is the end of my demonstration of uh, my presentation. And now we can switch to the questions and answers section. Thank you, Aista. Uh, now, as you mentioned, is the question time and the first question would be can you demonstrate the 10th slide and tell again the frameworks and methodologies for embassy oh of course Ten slide. here um these are architecture frameworks, UAF, DODAF, MODAF, NAV, and there is also one architecture framework I haven't mentioned in my presentation. This is Magic Grid, and Magic Grid is our is um, uh, the framework developed by No Magic. Uh, we have um, analyzed many architecture frameworks, the same uh, UAF, DODAF, MODAF, NAV. And uh, we um, created our own one, just a like a synthesis of these analyzed architecture frameworks. And there are also methodologies, OSIM, Harmony, FANS, SysMod. Thank you, Esther. Another question. If I have created a hyperlink to a document on my computer, when I send the magic draw model, the zip file, to the sun, someone else, does that document get saved to the file as well? Will they be able to open to see the hyperlink document? Oh, that is a very, very good question. Um, then if you uh, create the hyperlink to the uh, to a file, to the external file, you have to, um, to give that file to your colleague together with the project. Uh, because if you transfer only project to the other computer, the 
file will it the model uh, will not be able to reach the file for opening it but uh, there is uh, one more um, one more capability that i haven't mentioned uh, this uh, this capability is um, attached files and um, if you uh, I, I can try to demonstrate it now uh, let's say the break disk uh, we can add um, uh, the attached file element to it attached file um, let's find my standard file here and uh, as you can see the file is now embedded in the project in this case uh, the file is portable together with the project with the model so thank you Aiste again as I mentioned in the beginning some questions might be left unanswered but all the answers will be published in written form together with a link to the webinar recording so if there is anything more you would like to ask, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you all for your participation. We hope to see you again in upcoming webinars.